What is up guys, but doubles back even the brand new video. Today I want to play Dark Surgeon on Project Ascension Season 8 Classless WoW. We're gonna draft a healing build, but not just any healing build. We're gonna draft a melee healing build, utilizing abilities with the Dark Surgeon enchant like Mutilate, like the Holy Nova, which transforms, by the way, into a brand new combo point spending ability known as Dark Transfusion. So yeah, this is a pretty badass build. And yeah, it's true, we have played this build before, but we haven't played it with two brand new epic enchants that came out that I think work perfectly for this build. Party Recuperation and Holy Hammer Nova. This is really interesting. It could be really good. So it gives me an excuse to finally level up my first healing character on Season 8, 1 to 60 with you guys, building him up from scratch, gearing him up from scratch, and healing all along the way. So I hope you guys enjoy the melee healer video. Let's jump right in. Okay guys, and we are in on Mick Healer today, my level one first healing character on season eight class as well. So we're gonna be drafting, of course, that's how this works, picking one from three abilities every single time, starting at level 10 all the way to 60, hoping that we get a great build. In this case, finally, a healer build. Dark Surgeon to be precise. Now, if you don't know from my older videos when this was a little bit different, but still basically the same thing, Dark Surgeon is a pretty interesting melee healer build that does the following. It increases my healing power by 20% of my AP, but reduces my healing taken by 30%. Holy Nova is transformed into Dark Transfusion now, and Mutilate increases the healing done by my circle of healing by 15%, and causes my next damaging rogue finishing move to consume my stacks and have a 10% chance per combo point to trigger a lesser circle circle of healing, stacking up the two times. That's interesting. Lots of circle of healing synergy, lots of AoE. And I have 100% chance when used on five combo points to get off what is essentially a free greater heal that casts faster as well, potentially instant cast, and also increase its healing by up to 45%. Now, the best part is the dark transfusion, which ties all this together. This ability does require the Holy Nova, but it transforms Holy Nova into dark transfusion. Five combo points on this is going to do some damage, but also heal everybody around me. So this comes coupled with the circle of healing means we have a lot of AoE. So you can only imagine the point of this is to mutilate, mutilate, then go for the dark transfusion, then go for the circle of healing, pop somebody up with a greater heal or a flash heal if they need it, and then continue your DPS rotation slash healing rotation, which should be pretty fun. However, in order to add some spice to it, right, something brand new, we're going to be using some brand new epic chants. The first of which I want to talk to you guys about is party recuperation. This is interesting. You require recuperate just to use it, and you have to have the primary stat of spirit selected in order to continue so you can't use this with strength or agi for example and what it does is it transforms recuperate into party recuperate giving my finishers just like dark transfusion right a 10 percent chance per combo point 50 percent chance on five combo points to give me a stack of bubbling tankard so essentially what this does is i can throw a brew at an ally within 30 yards to help them recuperate restoring five health every 30 seconds i can only imagine that scales well and that it's not complete garbage like five health actually sounds. So we'll be throwing tankards around. Hopefully that helps me with my single target. It gives me a hot. Uh, it should give me a little bit more consistency. I like that idea. Now, another thing that's going to go hand in hand with this idea of adding hots to a class that otherwise wouldn't have had it increasing my consistency is the Holy Hammer Nova. This is my Lights Hammer, a brand new ability with Season 8 as well. Applies the bathed in light effect to heal my allies or the primed by light effect to damage my enemies, but no longer slows anybody. Holy Holy Nova. This is very interesting. It should work with Dark Transfusion. Will now reduce the active cooldown of Light's Hammer by two seconds. So every time I just do my rotation, right, going for those Mutilates and those Dark Transfusions, I'm reducing the cooldown of my freaking Light's Hammer. So I'm throwing hammers out, throwing tankards out, right, attacking people, and then smacking them and healing everybody else. And uh, it doesn't really fit any genuine theme, to be honest with you, but it's a bunch of interesting melee-esque abilities that have some synergy. So I thought, let's try to make a healer out of it, right? The Bathed in Light effect, by the way, says it increases the healing received from Holy Nova by 10%, up to 50%. So, Dark Transfusion doing up to 50% more damage, that's insane in my mind. I'm thinking that's my main ability, for God's sakes, with Dark Surgeon. 
Surgeon, I get 50% more theoretical healing from that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'll go ahead and put it up on your screen right now where I got these two enchants because they did come out. They're World Forge enchants, so you have to go find them out in the world, collect them, and then you do get to have them forever. And of course, the first one being Party Recuperate, you can't do this on Mythic for some reason, but if I queue for a normal, for example, I'm able to go in the uh, initial room that you start off. If you just queue for BRD Upper City, you just go upstairs, you go in the room you see my character in, you jump up a bit on these boxes, and boom, you can see this little chest. You open it with a World Forge key, and you get the enchant. Now, for the other one, the Holy Hammer Nova, I had to go to Hearth Glen in the Western Plague Lands. I had to farm Paladins, and I had to collect 20 fragments. After collecting 20 fragments from the Paladins, I can use them and then create the enchant itself. That one did actually take like a good hour or two, something like that, to farm. It wasn't horrible, though. Pretty solid fairness on the drop rates, and uh, nobody else was going for it. So, hey, who knows if it's good or not, but we're going to give it a solid try. So, guys, some key abilities we're going to be wanting for this would be things like Mutilate, of course. I need the Holy Nova for that transformation. A greater heal is going to be required. That's my big heal. Maybe the Flash heal still as well. You can see I did start with the Judgment of Light, and what this does is we learned this actually from Wrath Classic, is that you put it on your targets, and everybody gets healed when they attack that target. That's pretty nice, pretty easy. Might even help me with my mana problems if I have them. We'll see if it's worth using. And for my skill cards, guys, we went for the things that you knew we would need. We went for the Light's Hammer. We went for the Cleanse. Why not? You could always use something like that. Earth Living Weapon, which is badass because we're melee. So uh, it's like, you know, we actually get to apply a healing effect to our weapon, which we're attacking with. Of course, it doesn't matter in that regard, but it's cool. It's thematic. Circle of Healing definitely required. Very good lucky cards, though. Cleanse Spirit, different from this one uh, because this this one can't remove curses, and this one can. Tremor Totem, because why not? It's vanilla. There's plenty of times you get feared. That could be nice. Holy Nova is required, so that's good. Mutilate, same thing. Cleansing Totem, I really like it. Removing disease and poison effects from everybody. That's really nice. Healing Stream Totem, because I thought to myself, the more totems I can drop, I mean, I feel like I'm going to have the time to, you know, drop one real quick. It gets the healing off. It does pretty good. We're good to go. Lastly, though, guys, for my starter abilities, I already mentioned one with the Judgment of the Light, but we also went for the Seal of Wisdom now because you can now get that at level 1, so I probably won't have any mana problems. It's something to think about, though, uh, because I'm going to probably have a normal mana pool go spirit gear, but somehow, somewhere, prioritize any kind of AP that I can somehow get my hands on. It's a weird spec, right? I'm not using a staff. I'm not using an offhand. I have to dual wield, right? Uh, so I'm probably going to go for intellect stuff that gives me, you know, any kind of spell power I can get my hands on. It's not impossible to find an offhand for that, but it's not exactly the most common thing in the world either. I do scale off melee AP, but I also need to be spirit for party recuperation, which we also have the recuperate starting off with in order to obtain that, and then I got the SS to get the recuperate, and uh, yeah, those are all of my abilities. But the thing is, because I have to go spirit for party recuperate and for most healing builds, I'm probably not going to get much benefit from the attack power scaling I get from Dark Surgeon, which is interesting, right? It's like, why is it even there? I know other people are doing different things with this enchant, though, going agi base, going strength base. We'll try spirit, we'll see how it works, and we'll see if we can get the right items for it, and if it's even going to end up being good in Mythic Zero, which is the bare minimum of what I'd like to get into on this guy from scratch, you have to keep in mind, no gear, nothing today. So, with all of that out of the way though, what I want to go ahead and start doing now is leveling up this guy, see what abilities we get, and start testing the build. As soon as I get the abilities to make this build work, we will start trying to use them. I think that means we have to wait till 50 though for Mutilate. That's the big F right there, right? Let's start leveling, let's see what we can do, and uh, let's see what abilities we get and if we can actually make this build work. Okay guys, got to level 12 real quick. We have two rolls to go for. Okay, we got a Legendary, so you can see I saw Picklock already. Hand of Protection, no Curse of Weakness. This is pretty much awful. I'm going to go for the pick lock, I guess. And then we've also got Dispel Curse. That's pretty good. Righteous Defense, Blood Rage. I'll go Dispel Curse. Definitely, as a healer, you need to make sure that you are at least the one that has a way to remove curses, magic effects, poisons, diseases, because normal players rarely pick that stuff. Sometimes out of greed, sometimes because of a lack of knowledge. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to make sure I have the Dispel Curse, just in case. We could get some better ways to dispel it, but that's a good way to start off, right? Okay, a few other rolls we've got up to level 19. Corruption Exposed Armor, Blessing Mastery. 
Valkyrie. I like that. Let's buff our allies as a healer, right? Uh, I'm going to go for the Blessing of Might because I do scale off that AP, remember? So, okay. That's pretty cool. Good with a melee group, maybe. Healing Touch, Shadow Word, Pain, Fire Blast. Pretty much all garbage. I need the Greater Heal, not the Healing Touch. Hopefully, we don't get that unlucky and we can actually get it. I'll go Healing Touch for now, though. It is my only heal at the moment, which is kind of weird. Uh, Righteous Defense, Eviscerate, Cure Toxins. I'm going to go with the Eviscerate for now. The reason I'm going to go with the Eviscerate for now is because I could not use Party Recuperation until I got a way to spend combo points and we don't get the holy nova for a little bit or the ability to utilize that legendary enchant that really ties it all together so let's take the eviscerate for now and we can use it while leveling which is nice so you can see uh party recuperate right here we'll start using that and be a healer in these bgs i'm queuing in oh and by the way a quick level 20 gives me i don't know none of this is really that good maybe portal mastery i never use it but maybe maybe this will be the time it can't be bad to be able to basically go wherever you want you know between portal mastery and all of my hearthstones i can basically go anywhere in the world right now in one second but what i wanted to do is finish that one bg to get to 20 that's why i haven't shown much yet there hasn't been much to go down i want to go spirit now though the reason i want to go spirit is so i can use party recoup and so i can devote myself to being a healer in the games the dungeons the bgs that we play so i'll go for the healing touch right now i'm going to go a little bit into the talents for it as well just so i'm not completely awful nine percent more healing touch crit that's really strong i don't want any pushback so i thought to myself let's just go ahead and do the nature's focus the capstone bonus is the main reason but uh, we can't quite get there yet it says the final rank of this talent says being crit while casting healing touch gives me a healing hot over time effect interesting okay we will give that a solid try and uh now let's try healing a battleground first time at level 20 actually and there we go warsong gulch i'll take it bro now i don't have voodoo but i wish i did i do have grid though right now so we're just gonna go with that one thing i like to make sure i have is a nice little macro for my healing touch that gives me the ability to do a mouse over macro for it so uh, i could just put my mouse over their name click the key bind and it heals them so we'll go ahead and do that put that in the place of my uh, current healing touch boom perfect and ready to go so between party recoup which is going to require me to get lucky with the eviscerate i'm talking like 30 percent chances on like a three point right uh to get that party recoup going but also judgmenting everybody i can i gotta judge everybody that way when my allies attack the judge target they get healed and then otherwise i'm going to be spamming healing touch right now and we'll just see if we can do the most healing in the entire bg that's going to be the goal right now okay let's just immediately start going for these healing touches so if they're not grayed out they are within range for me so i'm just going to keep that in mind as long as i keep everybody up to the best of my ability let's just start autoing this guy judgment on this guy as well because i do want to try to party recoup i didn't get it right there i didn't get the percentage we'll go for this guy though so as long as we have a healer and they don't that's always going to put us at a strict advantage let's just go for the little ss right here judgment on this guy because everybody's attacking him that's going to make sure everybody gets healed from that dude this guy's getting healed too and he's like twinkie he has a lot of like twink gear on him over a thousand hp right now and nobody else is even close all right i am trying to heal everybody to the best of my ability stacking up combo points we're gonna get a freaking party recoup probably here no i didn't wait no i gotta get the abyss right off oh okay i got it throw a brew at somebody at you i threw a brew at this guy is it gonna help him i also got a healing touch on him you can see the brews on him right now what's he healing him for 13 oh no please do more at max level bro please do more at max level we did save him and it could have been also because of the brew but it was a lot of setup though it's gonna be a lot better with mutilate dark transfusion let's not forget i'm not forgetting that Uh oh i don't want to die i have no gear by the way so this is also like can you just q healer and just do your best with nothing of value on I'm going to judgment that little baby elf on a shelf. Well, it's actually a gnome, but it looks like the little elf on a shelf meme, right? I do have like bottomless amounts of mana with this healing touch spec right now, which is a big plus. You can see like with the SS and not having a lot of the energy talents that you don't get till 40 plus, it really makes it tough to build those combo points. But I want to make it clear, there is going to come a day where building combo points is one of the easiest things of this entire spec, right? Okay, I have a heal right there. And we have another one on this guy another one on this guy and there comes a time i think sometimes in pvp when you're doing this especially at low levels where there's like just less going on where you can just heal in the middle of the fight and hope that your allies actually do something right oh what do we got lucky card healing stream totem oh holy nova i'm actually oh my god i don't know what to do do i take the holy nova like i have a high chance of getting it again but this is not a prestiged character so i might not actually get lucky i could get screwed something tells me i should just go for the stuff that uh 
I definitely need. And uh, I could still get this lucky card, by the way. So I'm going to go Holy Nova. Because the way they change lucky cards, like, yeah, I could totally get that again. Plus, I might be able to go ahead and use our legendary enchant early. Uh, just not with the mutilate. Okay, focus magic. I'll pass on that. So yeah, that's my thought process behind that. That might work perfectly. We might be able to Holy Nova Dark Transfusion right now in our 20s. Okay, so we do actually have one flag cap, though. So we are winning, which is nice. Where's my healing right now out of raw curiosity? Oh my god. What the f how is the stratification to such an extreme? Like that is a, I know I'm healing touch spamming, right? How the hell do they have that much more healing than me? I have to pay attention to those guys' builds. Like something's being done here that's abnormal. For some reason I'm healing for 76s, bro. I don't even get it. Oh, my ally died because I ran out of mana. Isn't that crazy? I feel like extra underpowered. Like I definitely need gear. Don't get me wrong. Okay, this guy is spamming healing wave right now. I set him as my focus target real quick just so I could see what's going on. He's just healing wave spamming. That's insane that it's such a big difference. I wonder why that's happening. Maybe there's more talents at this level. Maybe he's using enchants. Okay, what do we got? Fizzle, Mark of the Wild, Tremor. I'll take the Tremor. That's pretty nice. Hopefully, we can make some use out of that. Okay, I guess the BG's done, bro. 27, what do we got? Redirect. Oh, that's amazing for this. I'll take that. So, I came in first for my team. It just doesn't mean that much. I mean, I know we won the BG, though, but still. As for the party recuperate, that's clearly not a level 20 thing. It's the, the scaling is so wrong, dude, but we're gonna make this work. And the best part about this is that look at all these battleground spoils I got from my BGs, and so that's where a lot of my gear is actually gonna come from now that I think about it. Okay, so I do need a buy dark Dark Surgeon, though, so it's only eight gold, which is nice. I love when I make builds out of the lesser known stuff because it's always so cheap. I don't even have to think about it. In fact, I haven't had to spend a big amount of money on an enchant in like one year or something crazy like that. Like, it's just, it's so easy. Wow, that's a lot of gear that I just got from a single cache. What the hell? Caretaker's cape. I'll put that on. And uh, we've got a staff of the Blessed Seer. I guess I can actually use a staff right now because I don't have the mutilate. Um, and we have Robe of the Moccasin with Spirit, Crystalline Cuffs with Spirit. Yeah, this is going to really help, guys. We have this one we can go for Spirit as well. So I have some Gaze Dreamer pants. I uh, can't quite use that ring. Resilient Boots for now, okay. And we've got an Oil Rag, which is not better than what I have. And we have one more of these. Let's do, once again, Spirit. And basically all the same items. But what I can do is sell those. First of all, though, I'm going to get on my max level guy and do enough reforges for me to get an Extract on a high level piece of gear because you get more XP on a high level piece than you do on a low level piece then we'll get the extract for the dark surgeon enchant put it on this guy and i'll see you guys in a bit when all that happens okay guys so i thought let's just try this real quick i did get the dark transfusion and we're gonna try it in a dungeon and just see if we can top people off you know my only healing is healing touch outside of the melee stuff i'm doing and these guys don't have a lot of hp like they will at max so it's a lot harder to build combo points so i'm gonna throw out a lot of like two point three point dark transfusions let's try one here 50s to everybody oh god no Okay, here's a dark... Oh, nope. It's gone. Wait, I can redirect. I can redirect. 160... 59s? What? Dude, a 59 is extremely low. I don't even remember it being that low when I played it once upon a time. It's going to get better at max, right? I, here's the thing. Ascension scaling. We've gone over it before. It's weird. There is actually AP scaling on Dark Transfusion. What do we get here? Cat form regrowth. Oh, uh, pa oh Paladin Aura Mastery. I'll take that and I'll take the Devotion Aura. I like the idea. I'm actually worried right now. My normal Holy Nova heals for more than a three point Dark Transfusion, probably even a five point. So look, the tank almost died, but I had to healing touch him to keep him up because I got like a 60 or whatever off the dark transfusion and now the healing touch actually does the real work So I really thought this would be usable while leveling. I guess it's not really usable while leveling though I am literally right now though better off spamming holy nova and I really don't know how to like quantify that so I can judgment right now I just saw a bunch of 66s. Was that the heal from my judgment of light? I think it is 83 right there. That's actually more healing as well than Dark Transfusion. What the hell? How is that even possible? A 66? It literally is. It's... Oh my god. Okay, the scaling's off at this level, bro. It's just off. I'm not even gonna keep, like, trying to make it work. It's just off. Okay, five combo point right here. Dark Transfusion in a moment. Let's see. A 119. That's what I get right now. Wowza, man. In my opinion, though, you can already see that it is going to scale pretty well at max, but at this level, with the way things are and the fact that, like, I'm healing a level 40 is a level 30, I think that's part of it. We got ooh, Earth Living Weapon right there. I'll definitely take that. Now, on my direct heals, I'm going to heal people for just a little bit more. And plus, I get some straight up healing power. You can see I have 144 bonus healing right now as spirit. Okay, level 32, Moonfire Slam Prayer of Healing. I'll take it. I don't know if I'm going to use it, but at least it's the magic. 
automatic. Wait a second, guys. Are you noticing this? First of all, I don't want this guy to die. But do you look at my weapon, bro? See how green it is? It wasn't like that before. One thing, look at <laughs> one thing I've realized, and I kind of like it, I think, but I also don't know if it maybe is too much. But actually, the spell visuals for these uh, weapon enhancing buffs, like Crusader, for example, the enchant, or uh, all sorts of things, they've been enhanced dramatically. They were never this powerful, as far as I remember. Um, because that green, I've played a lot of shaman in my life, and never once did I even notice that I had Earth Living Weapon. But I feel like they've upped the spell visuals, which is always a good thing on the overall, let's just say. But it's like super green, you know what I mean? Like it almost looks like I have poison on my blade. We're almost done with this though, guys. And as you can see, I've reverted the Holy Touch healing and uh, maybe the occasional Holy Nova. But we're level 34 off that. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we've got Flame Strike, Ancestral Spirit. There we go. We're Mind Flame. I'm going to take the res. I'm a healer. I should have that. Okay, so we did some PvE and it turns out that, uh, well, I didn't even get to use Party Recoup. Uh, it was kind of weak in that BG at low levels anyway. The scaling makes using some of this stuff not as good as I think it's going to be at max. So let's keep on leveling so we can actually test it for real. So I did another quick BG, got to level 40. At least I was first place healing, but the numbers are not what I was seeing in previous BGs from some other builds. So uh, yeah, I don't know what that's all about, but greater heal. There we go. I'll pick that up. I got the lights hammer, by the way, too, at 36. So we are getting places, boys. Okay, so I did another quick BG and I can't even explain to you guys how there's like, I, I don't even know how to quantify it. Well, I mean, I can quantify it here. 90,000 more healing on Zalupa right there. But what I'm trying to say is, how is that sort of stratification possible? Like, how? You can see all the normal people. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's like, well, okay. This dude's 11 times higher than the next best one. Now, I'm not going to pretend like this was my best match. You know, kind of half AFK. Just trying to get these levels in. We all know it's not working right now while leveling. Got to get to max. Got to get that max level gear. That max level stuff. The mythics. The higher HP mob all that jazz but I just happened to look at this at the end of this BG and I was like what the hell okay so I've reached max and I think I kind of know how I want this build to be but we got to do some rerolls first 21 rerolls I've basically got exactly what I need for this build but there could be a few things here and there maybe like the renew that I might want to try playing with uh, that would be pretty solid to get as well pretty easy a common let's see if we get anything good I'd also take the flash heal not the flash of light that we got right here but the flash heal which is the priest variant as I do have some synergy with that as well so Let's go ahead and just skip this one. Okay, so I only have 15 of these left. Haven't got anything good yet. I'm looking for literally anything that would help me be more supporty or more of a healer, right? So far, no luck. Let's keep going, though. We got Envenom, Conjure Food, Dispersion. I'll go Conjure Food, just why not, right? Uh, oh, actually, no, I guess I won't. I'd rather have the pick lock, lol. Okay, 14 more to go. Have random people inviting me and stuff. What else do we got? I don't want the Fire Aura. Let's do another one. Mana Forge Barrier, Glaive Toss, Shadow Bolt. Nope, okay, what else do we got? Ice Lance, Lightning Bolt, Shadow Ward. Wow, dude. Auto Shot, Charge! Holy Fire, I'll take the Charge. You might think that that's a bit out of place because we're still a healer and I'm not doing really PvP with this guy probably at max, but here's the thing. If I can't catch up with these guys to build combo points when they're going pull to pull, I'm not healing, bro. So charge is actually a big pull. I just didn't think it was possible to get it because it's an epic. We did get it though. So that's actually massive, like an actual good pull. That actually makes everything worth it at the end of the day. We got demonic leap here as well. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Take that over. Wow. This is actually horrible. I will take it over the res. Hope nobody dies, bro. But like I said, having that mobility is a big deal. Concentration our aquatic form. Dispel magic. I don't think I need any of that. Blessing of wisdom, but I already have the blessing of might. Damn. Plus, I don't think I'm going to have any mana problems at all. I think we fit. Oh! Ooh, Halo. That's a brand new ability too, and it might actually work with me. Creates a ring of holy energy around me that quickly expands and grows in power. Healing raid and party members up to 30 yards away. It heals with greater effect the further away the target is. If I'm in melee range, the majority of the raid is inevitably going to be farther away from me. That's just a fact. You have healers, and you have what is going to be mostly ranged DPS, bar none. It's crazy conjecture. None of it's required, though, for Halo to be good, because uh, we are a holy healing-based spec, so let's take it. It, dude what can i replace horrible horrible draft bro and uh weirdly enough sadly enough i'm gonna get rid of the blessing of might why somebody could have battle shout somebody could have blessing of might but even if somebody has halo that's not really helping me heal right so i will take it oh my god shout mastery for what though yeah actually i will you know what screw it i don't know should i tunnel vision that hard guys i don't i don't know having a curse as a healer is a big deal i'm gonna pass 
you know what look it did work perfectly there but like i just said my point doesn't make sense if i take shout mastery because somebody else could have it but somebody probably won't have dispel curse you know that's true okay four more to go we have searing pain there's the flash shield what the hell yeah i'll get rid of earth shock i guess i'll keep the uh, meditate and uh we have deadly throw i'm gonna pass on that so flash shield does actually work with the spec it's greater heal or flash heal with the synergy um i do just laughed which is like perfect too right and now we have this halo oh man this is gonna be fun guys it's gonna be fun to play with increased healing taken from holy spells wow and i'm all aoe dude this is perfect three more to go okay actually one more to go and do we get anything to uh, wrap it all up hurricane heroic strike execute damn it dude nothing but it's okay we don't actually need any of this stuff bro we actually got what might actually be perfect um which again this doesn't happen often for things to be perfect right especially when you're randomizing all of your abilities but if you just look at what i've got right now this is actually pretty damn good okay guys so i think we finally got a just a starter build right we'll start with this i'm obviously going to be putting a lot of points in a hit rating right now because missing with no gear is just not worth having five percent more crit so we're going to go for that so we did things like vitality have to come for more energy regen seal of fate these are standard mutilate combos we went over them with things like mayhem uh because because you want to build combo points we also got the honor among thieves i'm trying this one though quick recovery i get six percent more healing on me on top of that recuperate heals for 30 percent more and my energy regen is increased by 20 percent while recuperate is active now how that actually functions with party recuperate i don't know could be nothing which would be weird could be only partly could be um i don't know we'll see but i want to try it nonetheless it's only two combo points why not let's experiment you know but the rest comes from priest and pally talents exclusively so i've got things like in the discipline tree just doing a holy heal crit gives my target a shield for 20 percent of the amount i think that's just solid overall uh, i took things like inspiration it's a very similar concept 10 percent blanket physical damage reduction to all of my allies and i get that for example through circle of healing or flash heal or greater heal which is pretty good i took more reach more radius on my aoe's as well with holy reach 10 percent more holy healing 25 percent of my spirit now becomes healing spell power which is pretty good divine providence which is more healing overall with basically everything i'm using right now and in the holy tree i'm taking illumination for one aspect of it it's the only part of it that actually works for me at all and that is that lights hammers cooldown is reduced by 15 seconds it's the only way in the game as far as i can see to reduce the cooldown of Light's Hammer. It's now at 45 seconds. We're trying it, right? I took Sacred Cleansing. I get a one second cooldown on Cleanse now. A little bit less periodic spell damage on my target as well. And uh, also Holy Guidance, converting 12% of my intellect now into healing spell power, which of course doubles down with what we just read in the Holy Tree Spiritual Guidance to give me quite a lot. So currently, even with no gear, I mean, I mean literally nothing. We're at 44 item level, guys. I'm using crap that I got either off the auction house, like this blood forage portrayer's boots or uh this zandalar confessor's binding but i'm mixing it with crap i got while leveling level 28 rings remember uh literally still damaged trinkets anything i could possibly find the needler because it had spirit on it and so it's not that much but we're at 582 bonus healing and hit capped of course as i said so let's queue at the moment i can only do a heroic but we've got to work up that gear grind so i'm already there i'll see you guys when we get in the first time so our journey began guys and i'll just say right off the bat things do start to scale a hell of a lot better primarily the lights hammer the dark transfusion absolutely amazing spells and you'll see it right now so i have the mutilate and we go for the mutilate we build up the combo points and i spam dark transfusion basically on cooldown of course with more random chance i'm gonna have better energy regen that's gonna be a major focus of the video you can see i already have a dark trauma weak aura as well that's that little cross right above my portrait when that pops up i have an instant greater heal and that's pretty good We'll talk more about that later as well. I'm also going to go for the judgment on demand as well, and I'm going to make sure that I combo things like Halo with the Circle of Healing and with the Dark Transfusion for a massive, massive bit of AoE healing. And uh, that's basically the combo right there. So what I like to do is pick a target, typically the biggest, beefiest target, like an A-bomb, like you can see, and I'll pop the judgment and just start laying into them, going for those Dark Transfusions. I'm going to keep a very close eye on my tank, right? Because the major weakness of this build is single target pumping into one, one specific target where the major strength i would say is massive aoe at least in the 
Mythic Plus department, I would say, because you do have a 5 cap on Circle of Healing, but nonetheless, it is a lot of AoE healing with that Halo and Dark Transfusion spam, as I said. I think ultimately the point of this spec is going to be to literally never stop doing your rotation, but one thing you'll notice is that if I feel like I'm perfectly fine, I can actually do what every other healer does and basically go AFK until somebody's really taking damage again. I can literally sit on 5 combo points as an example and just plan out when I'm going to go for that Dark Transfusion. And I should also mention, as I kind of alluded to before, Light's Hammer becomes massive. I throw the Light's Hammer down right before I know I want to go for a big Dark Transfusion. Perhaps I put that first before I go for my Halo and, you know, the Dark Transfusion Circle of Healing combo. And uh, my AoE healing just goes through the roof. But you need your party to stack. I start off these dungeons by not telling my party what to do because I'm learning and it'll be okay. But if I'm taking things more serious, let's say a Mythic 10 Plus or something like that, I would make sure to let everybody in my party know that if you stack, even as a ranged guy, it's really going to help. I also have the Tremor Totem and stuff like that, so I have a lot of ways to get people out of CC. One thing you'll notice I'm pretty good on is consistently utilizing my Cleanse and my Dispel Curse throughout this dungeon to get rid of literally everything. My tank is constantly slowed by things like Frostbolt. People are constantly getting diseases on them, and even random curses, all of which are extremely annoying. And a lot of people hate these types of mechanics and these checks, but I like them because there's something that you can literally build around the idea of countering, and that's what makes it fun to me. It's not just move out of the doo-doo on the ground, it's this guy has a curse on it. Were you greedy in your draft? If you just got unlucky, that's the only actual bad part, but were you greedy or do you have the curse? And now are you going to use it? Or are you going to be greedy even more so and just focus on, let's say, DPS tanking or in my case, healing? And you also have to know when to dispel and when to heal, and that's interesting as well, and I wasn't always perfect on it. You'll see more of that later on as well. But yeah, when it comes to the bosses, so far that's the easiest thing for me because typically most bosses just feel like they auto attack you. Now we are going to go over some bosses that actually have good mechanics. I think Ascension should model more bosses after these guys that we'll end up talking about, by the way, because they're actually hard. And uh, that is actually kind of tough because like I said, it's not just single target pumping, but seemingly also if everybody in my party is actually taking extremely heavy damage all at the same time. Let's say multiple people are standing in duty that they're not supposed to be standing in. So I actually think that one of the things we'll end up talking about is not so much that my single target struggles, but more that my burst healing in certain situations does struggle. Because I have an amazing setup, right? But if things are on cooldown and everybody's at 30%, will I be able to keep you up? Yes, sometimes, but it's very scary and I don't know what that means yet. Okay, so what can I say? I did a bunch of heroics, we did our very first mythic, we did pretty freaking well, and uh, I don't think it was that difficult. Yeah, there were moments where I really did have to pump, and uh, that's good though, that makes sense. I literally only have 59 item level and uh, kind of dicey gear, I guess you could say. But we are getting stronger, right? My gear is getting better, I've got a bunch of heroic spirit prioritization type of stuff, and uh, it's getting to a point where I feel like, as you saw, I can do mythics and I cannot be a detriment to my team. I just did that last one. It was super duper easy to do. There were a few interesting pulls, but let me tell you, based on that mythic alone, what I figured out about this spec so far. So first of all, this is an AoE king, right? And I think that's the main strength, obviously, of the build. The Dark Transfusion is basically Holy Nova that costs combo points, and it really does pump. You have a 50% chance on that, by the way, to get a free lesser circle of healing off, and while I don't really notice it, sometimes, sometimes, right, when I do pump extra hard with that Dark Transfusion, I know it came off, and I know it actually did some good. But I don't rely on it, let me just put it like that. Now what I will say is reducing the cooldown of Light's Hammer by 15 seconds, while seemingly trivial, I actually think is pivotal for the build. That's because as I was playing, and especially in this Mythic, I realized that Light's Hammer is literally my strongest cooldown period. Halo is pretty good, don't get me wrong. I like to save the Halo for right before I'm about to go for like a five point dark transfusion into the circle, maybe into the Light's Hammer after that, and uh, that works really, really well. But the Light's Hammer itself, man, is impeccable. Not just because the healing is good, not just because it adds a little bit of damage and truthfully makes you feel powerful when you use it, but because it also makes your dark transfusion hit even harder on the healing side of things, and that's a really big deal. Let me show you guys real quick what I mean. So if I build some cobble points real quick, uh, we'll see 
see exactly what I heal for with a five point dark transfusion right now. Okay, I had to invite somebody to really check. It's a, that's not a 472, what the hell? No, it turns out it was in fact a 472. 778 with it, and it is apparently like 472 without it. But that's a bunch of extra healing, right? So yeah, it was like 472 without it, and then if you have the bathed in light procs from the epic enchant lights hammer, yeah, it actually does do a lot more. Actually, dark transfusion feels like it was doing a lot more in the actual dungeon, but then I look at the numbers and I'm like, that doesn't seem right, but hey, what do I know, right? Now, where things didn't go well so far, though, is the party recuperation. Guys, it's pretty bad. I am actually disappointed big time in this because I just don't understand how you can mess the numbers up this bad. I feel like maybe I'm missing something. Um, but let me show you what I mean. So if I build some combo points, I'll just keep going until I get one stack. Okay, I did get one the first time. Let's keep in mind, though, it's a 50% chance. You don't even guarantee yourself a tankard, right? Uh, let's see. I think I actually do get lucky this time. I have two. So I can use it on Kasuka here. And you can see he's getting healed for 117. I can use another one. It doesn't stack, okay? <laughs> it doesn't even stack. It's a 117. Now, a 117 with intense setup is one of the worst things I've ever seen, just to be honest with you. There's nothing good about it. I was making fun of it in my dungeons. I was saying, guys, do you realize the proc from my Earth Living Weapon effect up here is actually stronger than a huge setup epic enchant that I'm using? So yeah, Ascension messed up, uh, but that's okay. I could be missing something but I perceive it as a mistake. I'm going to keep it in the build. I think it's made for the build, but I want to give a little bit of an homage to a little hero from that mythic I'll show you guys right now as well, which is the Meditate. Now, Meditate is not something I plan to get. I didn't think I'd have any mana problems, but it turns out when the going gets tough, it's possible to be low on mana, and that could be very scary. So what I realized is it's really easy to build five combo points, go for the Meditate real quick, and to absolutely slap in that regard uh, because the Meditate will get my mana going and then I'll be able to build it up even more with the seal of wisdom the occasional judgment giving me mana as well doesn't hurt and when things get really rough that's the way to counteract it I guess what I'm trying to say guys is the build has an answer to everything even single target while less good because we built spirit we can actually just cast the greater heals when we need to now one thing to keep in mind and I will make sure to show this to you guys right now you can see this little thing I've made with weak R's I have to do kind of like ghetto weak R's right now because I can't use a special UI and we've already gone over why something about season eight ascension i don't know uh but i have this and when this pops up it means I have three stacks, as you can see, of Trauma Care. Trauma Care is what we read out as giving me a reduced mana cost, greater heal, or flash heal. But more importantly, for greater heal, it actually makes it instant cast and has 45% increased healing. This is what I've been using. So like when a bear tank, for example, runs out of cooldowns, they don't dodge too much, right? And then out of nowhere, they're at 40%. Boom! Greater heal all the way to max. And that's been really nice. But again, I have to stress the Light's Hammer. You do need this for this build. So what I will say is that while party recuperation was a bit of a dud, definitely missed the mark, Holy Hammer Nova did not. Holy Hammer Nova is good. And uh, yeah, reduce the cooldown by 15, but I'm reducing it, as you can see, by two seconds even more every time I dark transfusion, and that's been noticeable. I've even looked at it, and I thought, how did that come off cooldown so fast? Oh, it's because I'm naturally spamming Nova constantly, and I'm making that happen myself. And that's really nice and synergistic. So for weapons right now, guys, I have the Gift of the Elven Magi, so I'm going for like a spell power thing. I'm not even caring about the AP scaling. It really does feel irrelevant to me right now. I tried to do some quick maths in my head, right? And I said, if I had 1,000 AP, which is a bit of a long shot, considering I'd have really low mana, like you could say, go Pally setup, or go, um, you know, Agi-based uh, Shaman Hunter setups. And I thought to myself, okay, that's a possibility. What am I gaining, though, from that damage-wise? Damn near nothing. You aren't going to do that much damage. So what am I losing by going with that? Well, quite a lot of uh, versatility and healing, I would feel like. I'd be a lot more reliant on the Mutilite Dark Transfusion, whereas right now, a Light's Hammer, Circle of Healing, Greater Heal. I can do 3, 4, 5, 10 Greater Heals if I really need to. Um, you know, and it's not a big deal, because I have the mana pool for it. I'm Spirit. It's fine. But I tried to do the math. I said, if I have 1,000 AP, and I get, as you can see up here, 20% of my attack power towards my healing AP, I would get 200 healing power. 200 healing power. Unless I'm just wrong, and I'm not the best at math. I'm great at everything else. Uh, but if I'm wrong here, then whatever. You can let me know in the comment section below. But it looks like 1,000 AP 
ATP, 20% of 1,000 is 200, boom, okay? 200 spell power. But if I go that route, how much bonus healing do I lose from just not being spirit and having spirit-based gear, which will naturally have more SP? And also more synergy with talents. Remember, as you can see with, uh, like, the priest talent, I think he was in the holy tree, right? Yeah, like, spiritual guidance. Can't use that if I'm not spirit-based. It's just not gonna work. So, I, you know, if I just take spirit off, for example, how much bonus healing do I lose if I go agi? Yeah, way more than 200, yo. Way more. What about strength? Obviously, I actually get a little bit more when I'm strength. I'm not saying it doesn't work that way, um, but I'm saying that I think spirit's right. You know, when I last played this build once in a blue moon ago, I did actually do either a strength or an agi version. Quite frankly, can't remember which one. This time, though, I'm going spirit. I do think that's correct. And uh, even with all the changes that have happened to this spec, I think it's safer. And really, what you're getting is a playstyle choice with this. It is genuinely different. You are common combo point based you do utilize meditate and dark transfusion and if they buff and they hopefully do buff party i mean dude this should be four or five times as strong for the setup it's very inconsistent by the way yeah i almost never get it to proc and when i do it quite literally only heals my target for like what 800 or something like that <laughs> like it has to be something it's crazy low bro crazy low but i think they will buff it because you can't watch this video and look at party recuperate and we're going to show it some more and actually think that that's okay but my friends i want to try to get more gear this guy needs to be pumped up new healing enchants are going to come out i want to try things like cryotherapy i don't even know what it is i really don't have any insider knowledge that you guys don't have but it does sound cool ice healer right okay that's right up my alley uh, but i need a guy set up for it so my item level goal is going to be a solid let's go with 62 if i can get 62 item level right now for the first day really or two days of playing this guy i'll feel pretty good about that so let's start queuing up for a mythic let's do some live commentary with it i'll show you guys how i play and yeah we'll keep going from there and Hopefully, we get some gear from this, because my trinkets, for example, are pretty duty. I'm queuing up for a mythic. I'm taking a risk. I think we'll be okay. Let's do it. Okay, guys, we're back in strat. I don't know what it is about strat, but we're sure getting a lot of them today. So, uh, yeah, let's see if we do good, if we get some gear. And this was actually kind of hard the first time, so let's see if it's going to be hard the second time. So, I'm going to build combo points. You can see the damage and the AoE right there from the Dark Transfusion. I like to throw the hammer down. Just, it just sounds cool to say, too. Then you build up those combo points, and my next Holy Nova is going to heal for more. And otherwise, I'm prioritizing taking off magic effects and curse effects with my Dispel Curse and my Cleanse. Wonderful picks, by the way. Like on this guy, boom, curse gone. On uh, this person, the tank, gone. So I like to focus the big guy, like in this case, the Patchwork Horror, and just, you know, pump into him as hard as I can. Dark Transfusion is the name of the game until I need something more, like a circle. And uh, just by using Mutilate, I increase the power of my circle of healing by like 30%, which is pretty good. It's fun, to be honest with you. As a guy that likes to be able to constantly fidget and click something all the time, sometimes on a healer, I feel like I'm AFKing a lot. You know, you put up your hots, you have like your major cooldowns, everything's gonna be okay. I'm not saying it's easy in all types of content to be a healer. That's just my general experience in Mythic and Mythic Plus and stuff like that. On this guy, though, I'm constantly fighting. I'm actually in the thick of things, and I love that about this healer. So far, by the way, I gotta say, I recommend it. Now, this is where things get weird. If there's nothing for me to quickly get combo points off of i feel naked so when they die fast when their hp is low i'm scared now i got three combo points on that guy but one thing you'll notice is that redirect i highly recommend you guys don't sleep on this it's bigger than it looks uh it's gonna be amazing because i can use it on this insect boom well, okay, fine. It did die too fast because the DPS is lit, but you can see the point, right? Typically, if the DPS isn't that high, I can get off a of Mutilate, then go for the Dark Transfusion, despite the fact that uh, I lost those combo points, so to speak, and that's because the redirect allows me to play around with my targets in a way that you could not do without. I do think it's required for the build. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good dungeon for testing your metal because there's going to be like 10 polys, 10 freezes, uh, 10 stuns coming up, right? You need to remove all of those as a healer. It's very, very paramount. So this guy's Nova right here. I'm going to get him out of that the tank. I don't want you to be slowed. If I can afford to, uh, you know, not heal, then I can actually take that time to immediately break everybody out of their Novas, break everybody out of their CC, hyper-prioritize that to the best of my ability, and that's going to be really good. You know, I will say, when I'm the DPS with the tank, and my healer has, like, on the ball with their dispels, my confidence goes through the roof. I instantly feel safe. So sometimes you do it just for that. Like, a lot of you guys could say, but McDoubles, does it really matter sometimes if 
you know, some guys, you know, slowed for too long or they're in a Nova. And I would say, I guess sometimes it really doesn't matter unless you're thinking big, right? And I'm trying to think big right now because, you know, it's my second mythic on a healer and I don't want to wipe. So far, by the way, never wiped, okay? I don't want this to be my first time. Let's go for the party recoup, as I said. And let's just see how that heals. I'm pretty sure it should not be high. Looks like I accidentally used it on myself. 117, lol. Even worse, dude. So I was basically AFK, by the way, on that fight. So you can see it on the tank now, though. It's still 167 on her. So I guess this tank um, has some way to increase healing done to them. Now, 11 to 20 came out. So you have those big gems now that you just saw for a hot second there that give you boons. And uh, it's in the M0s as well for some reason, which is fine, I guess. Uh, basically, you get all these different boots. I haven't done this since the Malganis era, I believe. All right, so I topped her off real quick before I went in. And I'm going to start off by just DPSing Cannon Master Willy or Wily. Who knows? I think it's Willy. We'll go for the Holy Hammer in just a moment right here. I'll let that stack up. So I just want to make sure I mutilate. So even if you don't think you need to use Dark Transfusion, right? If you're afraid for whatever reason that if you use it now, it's going to be a waste and you need to save it for a few seconds, just make sure that you don't lax on the mutilate consistently enough to keep up that buff. I'll say that at the very bare minimum, right? So we get a barrage girdle here, which is not better than what I have. Currently, I am prioritizing uh, basically just spell power spirit for like a secondary stat. I kind of default to crit when nothing else makes sense. Oh, we have a poly guy right now you're out of the poly don't worry my friend okay so we've got archivist galford and uh well we're gonna have another guy right up here so we're almost done of course i'm the first one in the sun that's one of the scary things too i've noticed like i can remove cc off anybody else but one of the things that worries me is when i get cc for eight seconds off a of poly or like a sun like that and they take a lot of damage they haven't died yet uh, but it does worry me because I don't have as much single target pump. So if I don't have trauma care like I didn't during that stun, like I can remove that guy's right. Uh, what am I going to do? Probably panic, right? Okay, he's turning into a demon now. So the fear is going to come out. I'm going to freaking tremor right now. And uh, hopefully somebody else tremors if they see the need for it. And maybe he'll die really fast. I'm going to make sure I have a bunch of hot stuff though. I'm just going to keep DPSing. Now, the ultimate goal, I think, is to never stop DPSing. And you can only really accomplish that if you have enough energy regen to where you can just constantly throw out the Dark Transfusions. My old version of the build utilized things like uh, Relenting Assault, I think it's called. It's Relentless Strikes, rather. It gives you 25 energy just for basically using a 5 combo point ability. And we might still do that, but so far, I've been okay without it. And by the way, he's already dead. What the hell? So we do have some interesting drops here. Uh, I don't think anybody went for this ring. So even though it's a DPS ring, I actually do need the hit rating just overall just to play around with it a bit so i am going to take it over my level 28 ring because come on for fire striders though i don't need that and grand crusaders helm don't need that but yeah overall guys we got a brand new ring i'll definitely take that item level is actually 61 off that so i only need one more lol but yeah i think we did really well i'm going to keep gearing on this guy and uh hopefully we could tackle a mythic plus in this video healing from scratch all in one video on a fresh two and that would be pretty sick okay so we just did our first mythic plus with a healer in season eight and it's with a crazy melee healer bro and we three chested it not only that but it was really easy i didn't really struggle one bit of course i've done enough main gate by now i know what i have to dispel i know to put the tremor totem on balnazar i know all these things right and that does make it a lot easier i feel like if i didn't know those things and i wasn't on point with the cleanse dispels this would be very hard for this build because there's just too much cc right but i like it i wouldn't change it honestly because honestly, even though at face value it seems bad, like just adding a stun or adding CC, it's cool because it's actually something you can deal with, right? It only feels bad when you didn't pick or get, luckily, right? Randomly, RNG, right? Any of the stuff you need to remove that stuff with. But when you actually had those choices and maybe even made those choices, like with my cleanse or with my dispel curse, it actually does feel good to play around. So we can actually see right now, by the way, if we get any gear. We're going to go spirit for all of this and hope that we just get some upgrades, ultimately. Okay, mana channel wand i think yeah that's definitely better than what i've got on so that's a really good start guys 65 item level and i also got this right here devout mantle this is also a huge win nine intellect one spirit eight spell power massive upgrade over the cyclone spalders and lastly i got a flare thorn a main hand spirit dagger with crit and sp huh well that is actually better i think right now than my gift of the elven magi i lose some mana although that's not the biggest thing for me really for me it's going to be spirit scaling that I have some ideas for. And then lastly, massive amounts of crit and SP, which means Flare Thorn wins. And that means we got three upgrades, guys. Three things we could use in our very first Mythic Plus. 
We're gonna go for my plus four key and let's see how we do. And okay, we two chested the plus four for my very first time on the healer. I will say that's a big win. This was one of the harder ones. We almost wiped on the abomination boss and it all came down to not being able to heal fast enough. But I can think that maybe with where we are right now, we did a pretty good job because we didn't even wipe, right? I was able to at least keep up the final three of us and we were able to finish off that boss, which was pretty clutch. I do think it's a really good build though overall and uh, I think it's really thematic, really fun. Light's Hammer adds so much to this that it did not have before Light's Hammer was in the game. Remember that just came out with season eight. It's three months old into like a five-year-old server or whatever it is. That's really intense. Uh, I think this is the best thing. Like this uh, Holy Hammer Nova is the best thing of the video. Highly recommend you try it for that. Maybe it's actually gonna find a home in a different build. I just fail to see what else might use Holy Nova other than Pious Strikes builds, right? Anyway, Mystical Cash. What do we get? Spirit based on that. I see a belt, devout belt, and another thing. Oh, oh my god, another wand, dude. So actually, both of these items are kind of duds. I will keep the devout belt because I might be able to get the four-piece bonus eventually. That would be pretty good. And actually, guys, it looks like we might try to do this plus six in this video, too. So some mythic keystone progression here. Tyrannical and Horde on this I haven't even gone over any of this stuff unless we saw it in the dungeon itself. Uh, but Tyrannical is just like boss health and boss damage increase. Meh. Horde, I don't even know. It doesn't have a description, but I'm sure I've played with it before. Uh, Titanic Power Glacial. Again, don't know. Killer Bees, though. Sucks ass, man. So glad I'm not playing with that right now. And Sanguine. These are apparently what are out right now. So something to keep in mind. As for my talents, I did try something new with this. I took out the recuperation stuff, right? Because what is that really doing me right now with how weak? this epic enchant is and i replaced it with something that actually ended up being pretty good and that my friends is surge of light a 50 percent chance to make my next flash heal be instant cast and cost no mana all i have to do is crit which happens a decent amount although i don't know if it's good enough to justify the seal fate the thing is i'm already getting two combo points per mutilate right and i'm already getting an extra one sometimes with the uh, honor among thieves right here i like this more than sealed fate because at least it's also three percent crit not just more combo points and and this one's pretty singular in that regard. I think we try not using it though. I think it's overall not good enough with this version. And I think for now, I'm just going to throw those points into twin disciplines. 3% more healing, 3% more crit. Not too bad. It's probably just better for me right now. So the talents are looking more priesty, right? They're looking a lot more paladin-y, a lot less roguey. The only rogue talents I'm using are going to be a little bit for hit right here, but I could really go into another tree for that. But the vitality is definitely vital, interestingly enough, right? Uh, then the honor among thieves, of course, as we talked about and after the mutilate which is you know an ability required for the build that's it dude everything else is pally priest also i don't even have a third epic enchant on right now as i said and that's because since we didn't prestige we don't have any extracts right but i feel like i could take a page out of my old book and if we could pull the consecration in this video i will just go for where is it holy ground right here consecration heals allies it really plays perfectly into this we did use it you know like six months ago when this build was different uh but it seems like it's still good okay what else do we got before we get into this dungeon oh a res i do need to get one of those again we got rid of our old one. Oh god okay i can't get it okay what else do we got we got call of elements solar b oh consecrate <laughs> yes we'll take it over the multi shot yes dude that's it right there that's my third epic man okay guys let's just go ahead and start we have five rolls we'll do them later plus six upper city this is gonna be hard for me i don't think it's gonna be a three chest but if we could two chest it that would be huge for my day one right now with this build okay and a mysterious three chest right here on upper city i will take it let's see what we get three chesting a plus six i still don't understand what's happening here i'm not gonna even have a commentary on it. i don't know it's happened for like a week now though so it must be normal anyway uh what do we get spirit right here Ooh, okay. Let's just do it every single time, man. Spirit, spirit. Oh, gloves. Oh, my God. Are we going to get good stuff? So, yet another wand, but... This is somehow better than my first one. I would rather have hit rating over MP5, I think, right now. Just because it's a weird build, guys. So, uh, yeah, I'll definitely take that. We'll put that on right, well, as soon as we can. It's possible that with enough intellect, you really could just go strength-based and just don't use party recuperate. But if they make party recuperate good, I think spirit, like I said, is still good. Anyway, we got one more piece of gear we can look at. And that is, uh, oh, I guess if I go by the logic I just said, this would be better than what I've got on. But we did get one upgrade grade bro and we're at 61.67 item level that's really sick guys and we got a brand new key which is a plus nine strat home service entrance 
really a nasty one to be honest with you so honestly this boss just gives me the hardest time i am really worried that we're not going to two chest this man one more boss to go actually the black guard too but one of our allies apparently can't get to us because of some kind of patrol near the gate do we give up on them i think we have no choice we have a summoning stone bro yo we just took one minute to summon man this is not good we're not gonna actually two chest it only because it took so long to summon yeah he says there's like a bunch of patrols at the start for some reason he couldn't get the summons maybe it's a mythic plus thing i really don't know and so we missed the two chest honestly off a of technicality bro like that should have been it i mean i'm not too upset considering the fact that this is like once again the first healer build of the season first character for that just gearing from scratch 61 item level i'm pretty happy with my progress it's actually very very nice mostly positive and uh, again outside of party recuperate which i will not quit harping on because i want it buffed bro uh, this build actually plays amazingly. You can see I'm talking the whole time, and yet it doesn't matter. Like, it plays itself. There you go. Let's see if we get anything good from the plus nine right there. Haste rating, crit rating, spell power. Bro, it has to be better than my level 47 cape. Less spirit, more of everything else. I'll just take that, bro. 69, yo, item level. Yeah, it's a little bit scuffed, as they said, but you know what? We made it, man. And honestly, it was close enough to feel good about it. Okay, now that I'm done with that dungeon, we will finish off these final five hands of fate. So let's go ahead and use that. Uh, slam, Hand of Gul'dan, Cure Poison, basically. Don't think I need that. Four more to go, though. Fizzle. I guess having an interrupt is actually pretty decent, especially one that doesn't really count against me. Oh, well, yeah, I'll take it over the Portal Mastery. Okay, final roll so far, guys, at max. And yeah, garbage. Okay. Okay, there we go. Just got the Holy Ground Epic Enchant for that Consecration. That's gonna add a lot more healing. Let's go ahead and just test that out. Okay, the max rank, though, is healing for 99s and 100s pretty quickly as well. And we can definitely afford it mana-wise, so I think that's a good choice guys part of the problem with this spec is that none of the talents really synergize that much i mean i think like what i could do really instead of divine intellect is maybe if i wanted to i could go into that aforementioned relentless strikes maybe that's just correct i feel like i'm okay energy wise combo point wise but i don't know maybe that's correct let's try it so now at least we have a little bit more rogue synergy we're getting 25 energy after every dark transfusion basically uh that could be fine that could be good it's been good before, but I gotta say I'm proud of the progression so far, guys. But okay, guys, actually this video got really long, so okay, we know what the Consecration's going to do, but really we played this build out. It's a pretty fun build. I do recommend you play it if you want a healer that does something different. Let's go ahead, though, and do a giveaway from the last video, just some goodies I have on my main for you guys, and uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it all up. Okay, let's see who wins, guys. There we go, Fett's Vet. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, McDubs, and all. Oxhorn on Thrall. Well, GG, bro. And that rhymed, too. Okay, so for you, my friend, Unleash Elemental Supporters Chest, plus some extra goodies. Oxhorn, grats, I'm giving you this and a bunch of awesome stuff. And uh, once again, leave your endgame name in the comment section below if you want a chance on winning a giveaway in my next Ascension video. But GG, bro. Oh, by the way, guys, just because I rarely talk about it, but I probably should. Grats to my guild. I know they've gone all the way to Mythic uh, Molten Core, and I know they've beat at least some of the bosses, if not half of it, on... Uh, ascended mc and they're just clearing the content man but yeah guys i think it was a pretty fun build overall i would say that i would highly recommend you if you want to play a melee healing build that actually uses combo points in a variety of different ways meditate dark transfusion and the possible synergy with the party recuperate that this is definitely the way to go i'm going to post in my discord a full version with all the enchants i would use and uh, you can copy that if you want but i'll see you guys in the next video mcdoubles out <laughs>